The TV One News is proudly brought to you by. BSP, our bank, our people. Hello and welcome to TV1 News. I'm Mary Silla Kelaton. And I'm Jasmine Ira Jack. Join me later in the Bulletin for Sports. In this edition, the ONC is alive and well. First refugee granted citizenship. And junior tennis in best performance. After four years of fighting between warring tribes in the Nayudo LLG of Medan province, the fight infections finally put down their arms in a reconciliation ceremony held on Tuesday. Gumase Village Ward 11 witnessed the reconciliation unfold as five different groups reconciled witnessed by police and community leaders. Gumase had its elementary school, church, eight posts and houses burnt as many families fled their homes. Some families sold their daughters to live in other communities, whilst others lived in fear in the mountain ranges. This is the first time enemies are seen eye to eye. This reconciliation puts the past to rest. The main peace and reconciliation was between the Sako and Sep Hausman. These two factions finally united and pledged the community to end the fighting and ensure peace prevailed in the area. Deputy Opposition Leader James Damane and Opposition Nominee for Prime Minister Alan Bird this afternoon in a press conference laid out their concerns on the recent conduct of certain government ministers bringing the office they currently hold into disrepute. Furthermore, Nomane says that in preparation for the resumption of the May sitting of Parliament, the opposition will be publishing paid advertisements outlining the chronology of correspondence from the last Parliament session when the motion was initially put to Parliament. For a vote of no confidence in the Prime Minister, and it's just to reassure the nation and then ensure that you know what to expect come May 28th, uh, that the motion of no confidence against the Prime Minister is alive and well, and it will be moved in Parliament in, on May 28th. It's the issue that we've seen circulating certainly over the last couple of months, but which now involves the, the, the police commissioner, and that is the allegations of wrongdoing and by certain members of the police force trying to bring those matters before the courts. Uh, what's even more disturbing is the recent press release by, by the police minister, uh, again defending the commissioner. Uh, he, he did that once before in, in the matter uh, of the prime minister in relation to the Paraka uh, Paraka payments. He he did come out and and defend the prime minister in that instance as well. So it's becoming a habit uh, with the minister concerned, where these matters ought to be resolved in a court of law, and it's not up to the minister to determine guilt or innocence. The ongoing construction of the Durand Farm housing project sewage system outside 8 Mile will not only serve the future residents of Durand Farm, but significantly benefit the McGregor Police Barracks, whose sewage systems malfunctioned almost two decades ago. Housing Minister Dr. Kobe Bomareo, along with NHC Acting Managing Director Abel Toll, and their team made the announcement when they inspected the work site at the barracks on April 8. 
Construction of the 2.3 kilometer Duran Farm sewage pipeline has already commenced from McGregor Police Barracks and will connect to the main sewage pond outside of Morata at a cost of 3.1 million kina. Housing Minister Dr. Kobi Bomare, who has made regular visits to the Duran Farm project, said they have accelerated progress on key trunk infrastructure like electricity, road networks, water supply, and the sewage system for the Duran Farm since the establishment of NHC's Special Procurement Commission in February 2023. With the sewage system scheduled to be completed by July 2024, this will also relieve the McGregor Police Barracks sewage problems. Raw sewage from the barracks is currently being dumped into the water drainage system and has been exposed to the residents. The sewage problem at McGregor Police Barracks is an ongoing one, with no solutions at end. During rainy seasons, the malfunction system causes wastewater and sewer to backflow into the houses, posing serious health and sanitation hazard for the officers and their families. NHC learned of their plight while working on the Durham Farm sewage system that will ultimately connect to the one at McGregor. NHC offered to help the barracks fix its sewage system by taking the load into its trunk with a connection point to be established at the barracks. SSD Group Commander Senior Inspector Watkins Tolaup was at the barracks to receive the housing minister and his team last week. He expressed gratitude to the National Housing Corporation and the housing minister for the project, which will significantly improve living conditions at the barracks. He pledged his support to NHC to ensure the sewerage project is completed successfully. Ruth Rongola, TV1 News. Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Immigration and Citizenship John Rosso reminded 48 Papua New Guinea citizenship recipients today that citizenship is a privilege which comes with rights, responsibilities and duties to the country of Papua New Guinea. The Citizenship Ceremony 2024 was held today in the State Function Room at Parliament in Port Moresby. Somalian refugee Obed Hussein Ali is among the 48 and becomes the first genuine refugee to have completed the refugee status determination process and has now began, been granted Papua New Guinea citizenship. Minister John Rosso acknowledged that for most of the recipients today, the journey had been long. From the day they first lodged their citizenship application until today, when they finally received their certificates and approval documents. The 48 citizenship recipients were interviewed and had their applications deliberated on by the Citizenship Advisory Committee in December 2023 and February this year. From the 48 participants, 6 are naturalized Papua New Guineans and 42 are dual citizens. Of the 48, Rosso made mention that six are naturalization recipients, including Somalian refugee Obed Hussein Ali, who is the first genuine refugee to have completed the refugee status determination process and applied for PNG citizenship in 2017 and has now been granted Papua New Guinea citizenship. Meantime, Rosso informed that since December 2023, the committee has managed to deliberate on over 80 applications to date, hence decreasing the backlog of citizenship applications waiting for a CAC hearing. Currently, over 380 citizenship applications are waiting a committee hearing. This also includes the West Papuan applications. Minister Rosso further stated, the CAC is committed to ensuring that the citizenship process is not delayed but continues as expected in accordance with its constitutional mandate. A new phase of the Australia-Papua New Guinea Law and Justice Partnership is a way forward for the country. The initiative launched today in Port Moresby aims to strengthen the rule of law and enhance justice in PNG and Australia. This builds on a long-standing development and security partnership between the two countries. The program Australia to Papua New Guinea Law and Justice Partnership or APLJ aims to increase the supply of justice services in targeted locations addressing the demand of communities through preventable measures and strengthening leadership, coordination and accountability in the law and justice sector of Papua New Guinea. 
The program, together with the extended PNG to Australia Policing Partnership and Bilateral Security Agreement, represents a significant scale-up in cooperation to respond to PNG's internal security priorities. According to Australia Deputy High Commissioner Joan Londis, the four-year program is aligned with the PNG government's medium-term development plan and the comprehensive security and economic partnership between the two countries. We have, of course, our extensive policing partnership between the Australian Federal Police and the Royal PNG Constabulary. That's being bolstered to further expand cooperation in important areas like policing infrastructure, capability development, leadership and training. But the Justice Partnership, which is what we're launching today, is also being boosted by 25% to approximately $200 million over four years, and that's approximately $250 million Kina over four years. Lundy said the program intends to work with key law and justice agencies and stakeholders to increase access to legal services for PNG communities, reduce the high demand for law and order issues, and strengthen leadership integrity and coordination across the sector. We've witnessed a great number of improvements in the delivery of justice services and the protection of human and legal rights and the encouragement of good governance. But notwithstanding those important results and positive results, we do recognise that there's still much work that we need to do together. The challenges persist and new ones have emerged. The Commissioner added that Australia stands in partnership with PNG and its ambition to build a safer Papua New Guinea where all individuals have equal access to justice, where human rights are projected and where the rule of law is upheld. We begin another chapter of our law and justice partnership. As the Secretary said and I echo these words, we've got to do so with renewed determination and purpose. Meanwhile, Secretary for the Department of Attorney General Dr. Eric Kua said lawlessness is an ongoing issue that is faced not only in PNG but globally as well. That is why Kua said working collaboratively together under such initiative will drive the change in the law and justice sector of both countries. Tracy Pa, TV1 News. Meanwhile, the Deputy High Commissioner said under this partnership, more emphasis will be put on delivery and responding to urgent community demands for better and more inclusive justice outcomes. Londa said it will further continue to support strategies that will promote the rights of women, children, people with disabilities and vulnerable populations. To support strategies that promote the rights of women, children, people with disabilities, and the vulnerable populations in our communities. We're going to continue to work very closely with all of you here in this room to strengthen the institutional frameworks, to promote transparency, but equally to promote accountability. 37 prosecutors graduate and Mama Bank gives away PMVs. We'll have those stories and more when we come back. Experience, a convenient and smarter way to do your banking with BSB Mobile Banking. You don't have to leave the office or your home to pay for bills. You can view your account balance, transfer funds, top up phone credits or purchase easy pay units wherever you are. Visit your BSB branch today to register now for BSB Mobile Banking. BSB Mobile Banking, the smarter way to bank. BSB, our bank, our people. He says the best hunters players come from his region. So does she. But there's one thing that brings everyone together. SB Laga, Bungim Yumi. The Toyota JD High Ace Bus comes in 14 and 15 seater, high roof luxury model, powered by 2.8 liters JD engine for optimal performance output, fuel efficiency and quietness, designed with improved safety features and easy maneuverability for tire steering angle. The High Ace lift lift suspension and annular frame structure is opted for smooth ride, comfort and safety. Experience the ride on the High Ace Bus and experience the High Ace Pride, the bus that exceeds all expectations. Hiya, Mama. You wait, I'm going to add him special flavor. 
Mm, right across the nation, we eat snack scrappers. Mmm, Emi Trubla. All get a young planalapun, only like him snack scrappers. Only make him here, mm. no PNG, one time lay biscuit company. It's crunchy and tasty. It's irresistible. Stefano. You should know your place and learn how to get along. Stefano has a child with me, and that gives me the right to be in this house. How dare you! Welcome back. BSP PNG's annual community projects have stepped in to address the dire sanitation situation at Jame Primary School in Maprik, East Sepik Province. For over a decade, the school's 800 students have coped with unsanitary conditions relying on pit toilets that posed a significant health risk. BSP's WIWEC branch manager, Philip Solala, led a four-week project to construct a new ablution block and install a water tank, ensuring a safer environment. The initiative involving BSP staff volunteering on weekends received praise from school officials, students and community leaders like Maprek Town Mayor Paul Dingu and LLG President Henry Ariro. This project exemplifies BSP's commitment to corporate social responsibility and community development. Four locals from Rigo District in Central Province were handed over motor vehicles to assist with village transport to and from Port Mosby. This was an initiative between the Rigo District Development Authority and the Women's Microbank or Mama Bank. The Rigo DDA is currently liaising with Mama Bank to have a borrow and payback scheme in a bid to do away with the free handout mentality in the district. Rigo DDA Chief Executive Officer Koru Abe emphasized that in assistance to this initiative, one million kina was made to Mama Bank. We intend to continue this arrangement for the next uh, remaining term of Se Anos uh, time. And I think that's a plus to all the Rigo people. Currently, we are receiving applications for um, small um, and medium uh, uh, enterprises. Uh, before, we were doing it on a hard order, uh, ad hoc basis. Now we are going to form we're formalizing it by getting them to, the, to, to get a loan from uh, Mama Bank and they understand the, the value of borrowing. Once they borrow, they must pay back and we, we build up that entrepreneurship. Mama Bank CEO Gunanidi Das and member for Rigo District, Sir Anopala, were present for the presentation. They both shared that this will be for the betterment of the local people in the district. It's always uh, going to be working together and how we can help the people in BNG through the you know, uh, organization like BSP and Mama Bank working together. We have now established a relationship based on trust. 
trust that you can help us and we will keep our commitments. So today, four people came into the bank. Congratulations to you, you have worked very hard. For me, I'm looking to the time when you will pay off your loans and put more money into your accounts. The four recipients were chosen from four different villages from inland to the coasts of Rigo district. These men were from Gemo and Taruba from the Rigo coast and Rigo East Omen and Boku village in Rigo inland. I'm just an ordinary person before. Right now I'm very happy that I've got a truck and this is true. The Rigo District Development Authority working with the Mama Bank and the Minister for Rigo. I'm so grateful. Uh, as far as I can understand myself, uh, life was before very tough on us, me and my people. This truck has really brought a change to our lives. Labama aims to pay back the loan to Mama Bank in 18 months' time. Jasmine Jack, TV1 News. A one-day National Fisheries Authority consultation meeting took place yesterday. The objective, developing non-tuna fisheries market in Singapore and China mainland. NFA Managing Director Justin Ilakini highlighted how the NFA is implementing programs to expand commercial activities in non-tuna sectors, primarily coastal and inshore resources. and also look at the Chinese market. If you look at the Chinese market and the Southeast Asian market, the market demands more of uh, the kind of uh, fisheries and modern resources that our people harvest. The crabs, the lobster, the reef fin fish, beach steamer, and all those, uh, all those marine products. So, importantly, the, the consultation here will, will talk about how our people can better access those markets. 37 Royal Papua New Guinea Constabulary Police Prosecutors around the country graduated yesterday with certificates and diplomas in handling prosecutions in court. The 37 police prosecutors graduated with their certificates and diplomas after undergoing the prosecution qualification program. The program was designed by the Papua New Guinea to Australia Policing Partnership in 2020. In 2023, 98 prosecutors were the first recipients of the training and this year is the second badge. There are two different stages of the program. Diplomas in Police Prosecuting and Certificates in Distance Education Stage. Out of the 37, 25 completed the first stage, while 12 completed the second stage. Speaking on behalf of the Commissioner of Police, the Deputy Commissioner of Police, Joanne Clarkson, said since the inception of this program, there has been an increase in the number of successful police prosecutions. The total 10,817 fresh cases registered with police last year, 9,864 were completed. Successful convictions and commit committals stood at 5,799. Claxon said a number of cases lost were due to procedural and administrative complications, including the failure to execute warrant incomplete investigation files and dismissal for the non-appearances of witnesses. So whilst there is improvement, there is still um, significant work to do uh, in this area, both prosecutions and the collaboration between prosecutions and investigations to further lift um, this, this success rate. She said the core part of the program is the court assessment phase. This covers pleas and bail applications, committal proceedings, and summary trials. During this, this phase, presiding district court magistrates are present and provide feedback on the technical approaches undertaken by students. To the officers who are graduating today, I sincerely commend you for successfully passing through this intensive program. You are now properly trained and equipped as police prosecutor.
Clarkson said this assessment have qualified 37 who are now qualified and ready to attend to court cases. Meanwhile, in presenting the DAX award to Prosecutor Daniel Gessie, the PNG APP Mission Commander Jamie Status said developing prosecution capability for the RPNGC is one aspect of meeting the training objective and at the same time strengthening the partnership between Australia and PNG. Tracy Pa, TV1 News. Meanwhile, the Deputy Commissioner adds that the certificates and diplomas issued to the police prosecutors are accredited to the National Tertiary Qualification Standards of the Department of Higher Education, Research, Science and Technology. This means that the prosecutors are trained and qualified under merit. This means that our graduating officers are leaving with diplomas and certificates recognized by DHERST. And now the finance news. The Kina closed one point lower at 0.2645 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, our Kina was buying 0.2570 US dollars, 0.3919 Australian dollars, 0.2317 Euro and 39.00 Japanese Yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, all closed higher except palm oil and crude oil closed the day unchanged. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed lower, ASX closed lower and all ordinaries closed lower as well. This is TV1 News. Stay tuned. We'll have the news making headlines overseas when we return. Experience, a convenient and smarter way to do your banking with BSB Mobile Banking. You don't have to leave the office or your home to pay for bills. You can view your account balance, transfer funds, top up phone credits or purchase easy pay units wherever you are. Visit your BSB branch today to register now for BSB Mobile Banking. BSB Mobile Banking, the smarter way to bank. BSB, our bank, our people. A true champion is measured by their courage, their determination, and their passion to never give up and to always keep trying. With a delicious Milo and Milk taste and added nutrients, Milo and Milk is a great way to fuel our little champions with nourishing energy every day. Because true champions give it their all. Milo, PNG and Mia, buying PNG made. All Mama Flame is story all Sam. Me say me you seen flame flower long one year. Yeah, me say me kim kai kai belong family belong me. You go more yet. Man belong me say me like him flower balls belong me want them kawa war na spring and year. All picking any belong me say me like him to my pineapple donut. Me say we walk him low house. Me make kumu mix him want them kawa na karama him long flower. Tasty hash browns. Time is Kelly one time all arapella kai kai. Me say we kiss him more kai kai long all get a toy me throw more one time flame flower. You in a picking more one time flame flower. Harry will get the rice lovers. Me plug a three hundred thousand kina scale school money long win him. Sans belong you low win him one thousand kina. Three hundred per lucky line by winning side long four plus fortnight. Sans belong you low win a big plus threat. By one kg he go in a twenty kg scale or ori rice. Cut him this last stamp now put him inside long envelope on the full name now contact details long you now drop him inside long entry box long store. Promotion by Pinis long March 29, 2024. Hurry up now win big plus one time scale now ori rice. Be any me plus long social media long save more. Terms now condition is tough. Hardware House is more than just a store. It is where quality meets affordability. Where culture is proudly celebrated. Spanning nine provinces, we pride ourselves in offering top-notch customer support and services. We're more than just a store. We're more than a brand. We are Hardware House. The room has been paid for until the end of the week. Take care of yourself. Just don't think there's anything you can do about it. She's someone's daughter. Holy shit! Those are some dangerous people. I can't leave her there. She's 15 years old. I trusted you. I came here to save you. The Enforcer. 
premieres Saturday, 9 p.m. on Warner TV. Here it comes to McGrady. Little kick in behind. The big fella arrives. Looking for their second. McGrady, chance here. Here he is. He's a try scoring machine. And Mitchell Watson's over. Thanks for staying with us. The government has welcomed a new deal between an Australian steelmaker and a U.S. military shipbuilder. As the two countries strengthen defense ties on the AUKUS, the deal was announced in the U.S. state of Virginia by Defense Industry Minister Pat Conroy. AUKUS-related visit to the U.S. Defense Industry Minister Pat Conroy came here to the shipyards at Newport News, Virginia. Today, it's here that Virginia-class subs are manufactured by HII. And he announced a new deal between Bissaloy Steel in Australia and HII. It's an initial purchase order of steel, but he says it's an important milestone in AUKUS and the hope is that it will lead to further deals between Australian companies and major US military shipbuilders. Now both the company and the minister say that this deal could potentially help alleviate some of the supply chain issues that the US military shipbuilding industry is experiencing and which have raised questions about the viability of the AUKUS pact under which Australia would initially acquire several of those Virginia class subs. The first work that Australian companies will get building nuclear submarines won't be for us. It'll be helping build United States and United Kingdom submarines. We very much view working with Australian suppliers as part of the solution for us to address the supply chain issues we have. Now, just a few days after Australia, the US and the UK, the AUKUS partner announced that they wanted to explore cooperation with Japan in Pillar 2 of the AUKUS Pact. The Japanese Prime Minister is being hosted here in the US. Now, the Prime Minister, Fumio Kishida, appeared to temper expectations that AUKUS might at some time in the near future become JOKUS, that that would be a, a formalized partnership but we heard from the u.s president joe biden about a plan to strengthen air defense ties between australia the u.s and japan so it seems clear whatever you call it the u.s is signaling again today that it increasingly sees japan as an important partner in efforts to counter chinese aggression in the indo-pacific region Palestinians are observing Eid al-Fitr marking the end of Ramadan. It comes amid mass destruction in the enclave and a looming famine. Eid al-Fitr marks the end of the Muslim holy month of Ramadan, usually a time of celebrations with festivities, feasts and family gatherings. But inside Gaza, the mood is one of horror and pain. Few are taking solace from this special time for Muslims, instead reflecting on six months of war and what they say is a daily struggle to stay alive amidst bombings, fighting, displacement and a humanitarian crisis. This day for me is heartbreaking compared to last Eid. I look at my children and I feel heartbroken. When I sit with them, I start to cry, feeling sad for the days that have passed. And with reports that talks between Hamas and Israel over a possible ceasefire deal are still not progressing, the United States is again exerting more pressure to secure a temporary pause. The US President Joe Biden taking a direct swipe at the actions of Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and how he's handled this war. I think what he's doing is a mistake. I don't agree with his approach. I think it's outrageous that those four, three vehicles were hit by drones and taken out on a highway where it wasn't like it was along the shore, it wasn't like there was a convoy moving here, et cetera. So I, what I'm calling for is for the Israelis to just call for a ceasefire, allow for the next six, eight weeks 
But some say this criticism directed by Joe Biden is mere lip service as the United States continues to fund weaponry and bombs used in the killing of civilians inside Gaza. A refugee advocacy group has raised the alarm over treatment of a growing number of people transferred to the Nauru detention facility. It comes after the third suspected asylum seeker group in five months was found on WA's Kimberley coastline and sent to the remote Micronesian island. Thus concern a historical track record of human rights abuses experienced by detainees is continuing. the coast and sent to Nauru. Now advocates say they have human rights concerns after making contact with arrivals. We've spoken to 38 out of 64. Mid last year, the processing centre on the small island north of Australia was vacant. But after a first group was intercepted in Australian waters in September, three more suspected asylum seeker groups have been found. One near Truscott Air Base in November, a second near Beagle Bay in February, and a third group again near Truscott last weekend. All 61 people were taken to Nauru for processing. Advocates have been talking to members of the group found in February. They are experiencing anxiety and depression and, um, and suicidal feelings. Caseworkers say their main concerns are a lack of adequate access to telecommunications with smartphones replaced by simpler models on arrival, no trauma-informed counselling and restricted access to human rights organisation websites on shared computers. What should be happening is when people arrive in Nauru, um, they should be given access to uh, legal assistance. The Department of Immigration says people at the Nauru Detention Centre are treated with respect, dignity and in accordance with human rights standards. It also says it's the Nauruan government's responsibility to process and manage maritime arrivals, including ensuring their welfare and access to services. It, it's extremely important that the Australian government learns from its past mistakes, from the human rights abuses that occurred, um, from the harm that indefinite detention causes challenges faced by so many others seeking a new life in Australia. Activists are celebrating the first ever climate case victory in the European Court of Human Rights. It found that Switzerland's efforts to meet its emission reduction targets had been woefully inadequate and said countries should better project their people from the consequences of global warming. An applause to celebrate a landmark victory. These women brought the case to the European Court of Human Rights. They argued their age and gender made them vulnerable to climate change induced heat waves and won. I'm so happy because we, we, could, we could do something. We could do something. We could um, contribute to the future, to a better future for our children. The judges ruled the Swiss government had breached the human rights of its citizens by not doing enough to stop the impacts of global warming. Specifically, it's the court pointed to the Swiss government's failure to set a national carbon budget and to comply with its own climate targets. This court has jurisdiction over 46 countries in Europe, including the UK, and lawyers say this sets an important precedent. It affirms that the European Convention on Human Rights applies to the climate crisis, the governments have legal duties to act and they've up upheld the right of people to go to court and challenge their government's weak climate action. The Swiss government says it's analysing the judgment and will contemplate future measures. The verdict comes as the EU's climate change service finds the world just experienced its hottest march on record. It is an important judgment, perhaps a historic judgment that will probably attract the attention of uh, many countries outside Switzerland. Meanwhile, two other major global warming cases before the court were knocked back for procedural reasons. But these activists have vowed to keep fighting. And that ends the new segment. Spots is next with Jasmine. Stay with us.
Start your day by doing the one, two, three with Colgate. Wake up. Brush your teeth. your day with Colgate. Hi, I'm Chef Jules Hennell, and this is where my true inspiration for cooking started. Like most of us, I learned to cook from my mom. Nothing beats simple recipes where fresh local produce is at the heart, especially when it's a home-cooked meal, prepared and shared with the ones you love. And in PNG, no meal is complete without rice. And my choice is always True Guy. True Guy, true inspiration through generations. What happened to snacking? Delicious is being denied. Munchings become mindless. To that we say, not on our watch. Messy munchers play dirty. Busy biters take a moment and intensify it. Because when boring gets in the way, Fanta comes out to play. Snack in the name of play. Talking dead folks, reptile plagues, it's not natural. It's a cult that has long ties to Gotham. We mean to give this city purpose and honor the damnation which bore it. Whose way must die. Ah! And through death, become this city's savior. Batman, the doom that came to Gotham, premieres Friday, April 12th, 10 p.m. on Cinemax. Drive it in, and Rochelle fires through his second of the opening quarter. Any one of about five can kick this goal. In the end, it's going to be Cam Rainer. someone's peace and tranquility. Disquiet. How far would you go for a stranger? You don't know what's out there. Land of gold. Terror has never run this deep. Make to the trench. New York, new rules. Screen 6. Dwayne Johnson on a rescue mission. San Andreas. Superstar Shayna Baszler, the Queen of Spades. I'm here to set it all on fire. Watch WWE on Digicel TV. Welcome back. In sports overseas, World Netball has banned transgender players from international competition with immediate effect under a new participation and inclusion policy. The global governing body of what has traditionally been and remains at an international level, a women's sport said it has undergone a lengthy consultation before issuing the policy. Global governing bodies for cricket, cycling, athletics, swimming and chess have all tightened their participation rules for transgender athletes in elite women's competitions during the past couple of years. The netball policy pertains only only to international competition. And back home, the PNG Junior Tennis were welcomed with a great family reception yesterday at the Port Mosby Racquet Club. Following the successful campaign at West Pacific Junior Championship in Lautoka, Fiji, the Junior Tennis campaigners had coach Eddie Mera classified this outing as one of the best junior tennis teams PNG sent abroad, returning to PNG show with 14 medals. For the first time in the recent history of junior tennis team at the Western Pacific Qualifier, the 2024 PNG junior tennis side had done well at the event. They have won 14 medals from eight wins in different categories. 
under 12, under 14, and under 16. The under 12 boys and girls did great registering second spot while Kolita Hakena led the tennis court in the under 14 and under 16 singles and doubles, retaining her sport in the Western Pacific. With over 80 kids participating in this year's tournament in Fiji, the PNG side did well and 11 of its 14 players participated in the event will return for the Pacific Challenge mid-year. Despite the result, coach Eddie Mera has noted down areas of improvement, which he would want to see from his side in the next tournament. We have also noted down a few um, key things that the kids need to work on during the tournament in Fiji. So we'll be mostly looking at our, our game, our match plans, our, um, our strategy um, going into the tournament. With the plans to put on a competitive performance against their opponent in the next Pacific Challenge yet again in Fiji, Mera has his side set on the sides that will put the competitive performance. Uh, but our biggest um, opponents or strongest competition uh, from the region would be the east, it's usually Tahiti, and from the north it would be the Guam and the uh, North Marian Islands. When highlighting the opponents to beat at the event, Mera expressed that to put in a strong performance against those sides, it depends on good preparation. They have less than six weeks to prepare for the Pacific qualifier. So, um, I believe um, we have a strong team um, for, this, uh, for the PJC. Um, um, yes, it all comes on to a training and now all the performance for the day. Yeah. Rex Lita, TV One Sports. Tennis is a progressing sport played in Papua New Guinea and is doing well among youngsters on the international stage. This week, a total of 14 medals was bagged by our junior tennis players at the West Pacific Qualifiers in Lautoka, Fiji. An impressive performance it was for the youngsters, including five debutants with a few 10-year-olds taking the courts for the first time. Proud parent Diane Hasavi gave an insight of the tournament and what's expected. First time to travel to the first time to travel to Fiji and yeah, play the tournament. I played the West Pacific and yeah, it was uh, it was hard. Yeah, I was kind of nervous and yeah, and a lot of good players were there. First time to travel to the first time to travel to Fiji and yeah, play the tournament. But our kids did really well. They fought hard. Uh, to bring those medals home and um, uh, you know let's talk about under 12 boys they started training 12 months in advance for this uh, event alone and they brought back silver and so now the kids that have uh, the first and second placings they move on to the well they've qualified for the Pacific Oceania Junior Championships and that's in um, that's in June first week of June the introduction of the PNG NRL Bid Junior Development Program in Lay City has seen increased participation of schools and teams per division. Lay Schools Rugby League Coordinator Charlie Ticaro has revealed. After last weekend's Round 3 of the Lay Schools Rugby League competition, Ticaro said the number of teams has increased in Season 2024. Ticaro said participating schools have increased to three teams per division in their respective categories under 15, under 17 and under 19 year olds. We have also Busu coming on board. Last year Busu decided not to take part, that, that was administrative uh, direction. But this year they changed their mind again and now they are joining the competition. Uh, they play next. So that's Busu. We also have Puman and the number of schools, I mean, the teams also increase in each schools. Like LASIK, we have three teams, Busu two teams for under 17, uh, Bumayon two teams for under 17, Bugendi two teams, so the teams numbers have increased. That's why we have to have two fields for the games, 
Lay uh, secondary school is running the also in the primary schools, and Bugendi we are running the uh, secondary school com. He added the introduction of the PNG NRLC B Junior Development Program has boosted the competition expected to be bigger and better next year. Tikaro further acknowledged the Lay Biscuit and Prima Small Goods Company to have been the number one sponsor of the competition since day one, even before the inception of the PNG NRLB Junior Program. You can see some of the, the dresses that the students are wearing now are sponsored by the Prima and Lay Biscuit Company. Okay, so they have been good to us for so long uh, without the sponsorship from the other sources. They have been with us since day one up until now. And uh, I'd just like to uh, commend the uh, support given by Leipzig Company and Prima Small Goods, the Soto family, and also the two schools, Bugendi Secondary School and Lay Secondary School. As well as adding that usage of school values, including electricity, water, and ablutions, have always been free of charge to the respective school's expenses. Lay Secondary School, especially ever since the school rugby league, uh, competition coming to our city. We have been using the facility, the water, the toilet, power, chairs, table, and the field. We have been using it for free. It's quite a voluntary job. That you know, teachers here, it's a voluntary job. But because of the support that is given by our business houses like Babes Company, uh, Prima Small Goods, because of that support, we are here just to and so our students are like, pursue their career in, in, in sports, especially rugby. Terry Longwood, TV One Sports. The Isuzu T20 Smash Cricket Tournament returned today after it was postponed twice due to heavy downpour. The tournament was first postponed on Sunday 7th of April. It was rescheduled for Wednesday 10th of April. The surprise morning rain yesterday forced the tournament organizing committee to postpone the match to today. The weather was welcoming today and the games convened. The remaining matches are expected to be completed before Saturday the 13th of April for the finals. On the resumption of the tournament today, Black Bears defeated the Mariners convincingly by 10 runs. In the later match, the Cassowaries took on the Mudmen. Tomorrow's match will see Cassowaries play Mariners at 10 in the morning and Mudmen play Black Bears at 2 p.m. The final is on Saturday. Money Plus Palm AFL kicks off the 2024 season on a winning note following the successful staging of the Lighting, Lightning 12 aside preseason challenge on Saturday at the Colts Ground. The season proper proceeds this weekend without any further delays, featuring the eight established clubs. The Lightning 12 aside challenge has set the new season rolling with a healthy number of clubs ready to compete for this year's Money Plus Cup. The established clubs are West Eagles, Dockers, Comboni, Magpies, Bombers, Tigers, Swans and Cats, Miners, Gordon's Kokofa Suspended and PNG Power. When giving a preview of what to expect this season, POM AFL President said, this year they are looking at a busy but entertaining two rounds of regular competition with 20 games overall before they get the finals, which will include the Southern Regional Selection Trials for the national teams, the Mosquitoes and the Flames. And that ends sports. Over to you, Maricela. Thanks, Jasmine. We'll now have the weather forecast. Port Mosby, Kerama and Alotau, partly cloudy with few showers and possible thunderstorm. Lay, partly cloudy with some showers. Madden and Wewek, partly cloudy with possible few showers. Kavian, Kokopo and Rabaul, partly cloudy with some showers and possible thunderstorm. Mount Hagen, partly cloudy with few showers and possible thunderstorm. Coral Sea, seas moderate with northeast to easterly winds of 15 to 20 knots. Waters of Southern PNG Indonesian border to Daru to Kiwai Islands, Kerma to Yul Island, Hood Point to Samari Island, Cape Bogol and all Melimbe Islands, seas 1 to 2 meters. And that ends this edition of TV1 News. Have a pleasant evening. Bye for now. The TV1 News.
News was proudly brought to you by BSP, our bank, our people.